and welcome to our lesson on factoring polynomials. Here are your learning targets and we're going to start right off finding the greatest common factor of a polynomial. When we are factoring a polynomial expression the very first thing you always want to check is to see if there is a greatest common factor that you can factor out. First of all, you will look for the greatest common factor of the coefficients. And remember, the coefficients are the numbers in front of the variables. And then once you find that greatest common factor, also look to see if there is a common variable factor, if there are letters that all of your terms have in, in common. So let's go ahead and get started with our first example. This one says to factor uh, this trinomial by using, and we're going to look for a greatest common factor first. And so first of all, do 6, 45, and 21 have a common factor that they share? And the answer to that question is yes. Um, if you were to actually um, use your factor tree, if you break down 6 into its prime factors, its prime factors are 2 and 3. And then 45 has factors of 5 and 9 and 9 can be broken down into 3 and 3, right? So we have those two numbers and then 21 can be broken down into 3 and 7. So what do you see that's common in all three of those terms? They all have a factor of 3, right? So that's the greatest uh, common factor as far as the coefficients are concerned. So that's the greatest common factor for the coefficients. Then if we look at the variables, they all have an xy in them. Okay, The greatest common factor of the x terms is x. The greatest common factor of the y terms is y. And so then we multiply all of those together. 3x and y is our greatest common factor. But we're not done once we identify that. Then we have to actually factor that out to see what our factored form is. So once we take out the 3xy, what you essentially do then is take each term and divide it by 3xy. So if I were to take 6x cubed y cubed and divide it by my greatest common factor of 3xy, I end up with 2x squared y squared. 6 divided by 3 is 2, x cubed over x, y cubed over y. That's where I get that term from. Likewise, if I take the second term, 45x squared y squared, divide it by your greatest common factor of 3xy, you end up with 15xy. And lastly, 21xy, if I take that and divide it by my 3xy, that's where I end up with just plus 7. Okay? So perfect square trinomials. A perfect square trinomial is one that can be written as the square of a binomial. In our last lesson, we learned how to expand a plus b the quantity squared and a minus b. We did that using FOIL, the first outer and our last, and we found out that we have this formula for each of those. Uh, to expand this, we basically square the first term and square the last term. Here's your a squared and b squared. And then multiply these together and double it for the middle term. The only difference is the first sign, okay? When we have a plus b, this is, they're both plus. a minus b, the first sign is minus. So now we're going to use that, and we're going to actually work backwards. We're going to start with the trinomial and factor it into uh, square binomials. So in order to do that, we first need to confirm that the first and the last terms are perfect squares. So we would want to make sure these two terms are perfect squares. Then we would have to confirm that the middle term is twice the product of those two terms. And then we can just write it in factored form. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, first of all, following our steps, confirm that the first and last term are perfect squares. And in this case, the first term, the perfect square is 6x, right? And the last term is a 1. And because we have a minus here, this should be a minus. And then we're going to put parentheses around this and square it. But we also need to make sure that the middle term is twice the product of a and b. So in this case, a is 6x, b is 1. If we multiply those together, we get 6x. Then we have to double it, right? So 2 times 6x is 12x, and it does work. So that is our factored form. How about example B? Is Are the outside terms, and remember, first we need to make sure that these are all in standard form before we factor them. And so this is in standard form. 
And the square root of 49x squared is 7x. The square root of 9 is 3. This sign is positive, so that makes the sign of my factor positive. Then we're going to square this. So we had perfect squares for our outside terms. Now we need to verify if we take 7x times 3, we get 21x. Now we need to make sure that if we double that times 2, do we get 42x? And yes, we do. So this is our factored form. To factor using a difference of squares, this is again a little bit of review from our last lesson. In our last lesson we started with a plus b and a minus b, and then we multiplied those together using FOIL and found out that our middle term dropped out and we just ended up with a difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared. So today we're going to start the opposite way. We're going to start with the a squared minus b squared and factor it into the product of the two binomials. To do so, we need to confirm that we have two perfect squares, and it is a difference of squares. We can't factor if that's a plus. And then we want to write it in factored form. So first of all, let's take a look. 100y squared minus 9. In this example, are these two numbers perfect squares? And yes, they are. The square root of 100y squared is 10y, and the square root of 9 is 3. So we need to write that twice, 10y3, 10y3, and then remember we have one of each sign. One is plus and one is minus. If we were to use FOIL on this thing, we would get right back to what we started with. Our outer inner term drops because they have opposite signs. Over on letter B, um, do we have two perfect squares? And yes, we do. 4x squared, if we take the square root, we get a 2x. And the square root of 121, is 11. Hopefully you recognize that. If not, you can use your calculator. And the signs are the opposite. One is plus and one is minus. Now here's where things get a little bit more difficult. Factoring trinomials that are not perfect squares or difference of squares, where they have this format. Okay, They might have a number in front of your x squared term. Those get a little complicated. But here's what you're going to do. You're going to look for factors of a and c, when they're multiplied together, that add to the middle term b. Okay, Just ignore your variables for now. And if you multiply the outside terms and then double that, okay, or not double that, excuse me, that was our perfect squares. We want factors of a times c that add to b. If we have this form where this second sign is a subtraction, then we want factors of a times c that differ by b. Rather than adding to, we want the ones that differ by b. So, in general, if a trinomial has this form, we can write it in factored form like this, okay? Where p times q is a times c, and p plus q is equal to b. Okay, I'm going to give you some sign rules, and this probably won't make a whole lot of sense until we work through examples. Okay, So in general, if we have this type of trinomial, ax squared plus bx plus c, if the second sign, now this is what I'm calling the second sign right here. Okay, This is the first sign, this is the second sign. If that second sign is positive, we're looking for factors of a times c that add to b. The other thing you need to know is that the factor signs are the same and they are whatever the first sign is. Okay, They're the same as the first sign. Both of your factors will be positive and they would both be plus. Okay, If this second sign right here is negative, if you have ax squared plus bx minus c, we are looking to find factors of ac that differ by b and your factor signs are different and your larger factor, when I say your larger factor, it's your outside or inside factor, is the same sign as the first sign. Now, I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but let's put it into practice. So here's where hopefully things will start making sense. So here we go. We don't have perfect squares, so we know it doesn't, and we don't have a difference of squares. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these two outside numbers together. Make sure we're in standard form, which we are. 2 times 7 gives us 14. So our, our product there, AC, is 14. This sign is minus, so we want factors of 14 that differ, okay, they differ by 5. Okay, they differ by B, which is the middle term. 
Okay? So what are our factors of 14? We have 1 and 14, or we have 2 and 7. Well, which pair do we want? If we subtract these numbers, this one gives us 13, this one gives us 5. Well, we want this factor pair, 2 and 7. So in order to get a 2 and a 7, now we're looking at our outside-inside product, right? Our letters are P, so we know we're going to have a P and a P. When we multiply our first terms, we want to get 2P squared. So one of those has to be a 2, and one of them has to be a 1, right? 2 times 1 gives us 2. Now our outside-inside, we want the outside and inside terms, okay? One of them has to be a 2, one of them has to be a 7. Well, in order to get a 2 or a 7, we can't get a 7 if we put the, the 7 here. That would give us a 14, right? So we want this to be a 1 and this to be a 7. So that our product 2p and 7p, do you see how our outside inside needs to be 2 and 7? Um, then we need to assign the signs. Okay, This tells us that the signs are different. The signs in here are different of our factors. And the bigger product has minus sign. Well, which one's bigger? This one gives us 2p. This one gives us 7p. 7p is bigger than 2p, so it gets the minus sign in front of it. Okay, the minus goes with the 7, and so that means this one would be plus. So then what we ended up with, our factors were 2p minus 7 and p plus 1. If we were to go ahead and do FOIL on that, we would get right back to what we started with right here. Okay, so let's take a look at another example x squared plus 2x minus 15. I'm just going to erase this stuff to get it out of the way here. This one's a little bit easier. Whenever you have a coefficient of 1 here, life is a little bit easier. So when we multiply a times c, we get 15, right? 1 times 15 is 15. So we want factors of 15 that differ by 2. Okay, factors of 15 that differ by 2. So what are the factors of 15? Well, 15 has a couple of factors, 1 and 15, okay, so you could list them if you want to go in order, 1 and 15, or 3 and 5. Well, when we subtract those, we get 2 when we use 3 and 5. So our first factors are x and x, right, that's where the x squared comes from. Then we need a 3 and a 5, it doesn't matter where you assign those, it's completely random. The signs are different, the bigger one's plus. So plus goes here, minus goes there. So if you do FOIL on this, you'll get right back to this one. First terms is x squared, outer is plus 5x, minus 3x for your inner, gives you a plus 2x, and then minus 15. Again, when your coefficient is 1, life is a lot easier than if it is not. So to get an m squared in our first position, we must have an m and an m. Factors of 100 that add to 20. Well, sounds like 10 and 10, right? 10 and 10 multiplied give you 100, but when you add them, you get 20. Signs are the same, and they are both whatever this one is, minus and minus. And there's the factored form. So I'm hoping that you're catching on to this. I'm hoping this is making sense. Okay. Last two examples here, 6x squared plus 5x minus 4. Again, our product here is 24. Okay. We want factors of 24 that differ by 5. Well, if you're not sure, list them out. 1 and 24, 2 and 12. It helps to go in order. 3 and 8 and 4 and 6. Now, which of those pairs, when you subtract them, give you 5? Well, it's this pair right here, 3 and 8, right? So we want an outside-inside product of our factors to give us 8. So we want one factor pair to give us uh, 3x and one factor pair the outside pair to give us 8x. Well, how can we get, remember we need a 6x squared, so we know we have an x in both positions here. And we want to get a 3x on the inside, so it looks like this one needs to be either a 1 here and a 3 here, or um, a 3 here and a 1 here. Well, it has to be a 3 here and a 1 here, because we need to get 4 for our last terms. So that tells us 1 times 4 gives us the 4, right? And the 6x squared, that tells us this one has to be 2x to give us a 6x squared. So this outside term, we get 8x. Inside term is 3x. 
signs are different, the bigger product is plus. Which one's bigger, 8x or 3x? And you are right, it's 8x, so the plus goes with the 4, and the minus goes with the 1. So there is factored form, 2x minus 1, 3x plus 4. Last one, m squared minus 21m plus 100. We want factors of 100 that add to 21. Well, we have 1 and 100, 2 and 50, uh, 4 and 25. When you find the one that works, you can stop. Uh, looks like this one, when we when factors that add to 21. I think I might have a mistake in here. Um, that adds to 29, doesn't it? So I think, I think this needs to be a minus right here. So let's change this to a minus sign just to make this work, okay? So we have an M and an M. And let's see, the other ones we have in here, do I have 5 and 20? And then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 10, right? So I'm not missing any. So that has to be a minus in order for this to work. So we're looking for 4 and 25. So just change that on your paper to a minus sign there. And the signs are different. The bigger one is minus. And so that makes this one a plus. And so if we do FOIL on this, we'll get right back to what we started with. Okay. So this won't factor if this is a plus. So we need to make that a minus. That's it for this video. We'll see you in class.